we're going to start a new unit here on the old Adobe cast, and that is of authoritarian state for paper two of the IB history exam. And today we begin with the Soviet Union. Now, the story here starts with Vladimir Lenin in 1917 with his leading of the October Revolution. Remember that followed years of disastrous war for for. Russia in World War I, a February revolution in 1917 where the Tsar was overthrown, and now this second revolution where Lenin will establish the world's first Marxist state, what is known as the Russian Soviet Republic. Now, remember, Marxism um, is this 19th century ideology that, that stated that history had developed through a series of class struggles between those that controlled the means of production of society and those that were oppressed by those controllers. And the final stage of that revolution would be a revolution of the working class. In Lenin's uh, world, that would be led by the Communist Party or the Bolshevik Party in the, this new state. From 1917 to 1922, Lenin will consolidate his power following a violent civil war uh, that will end with a victory of Lenin's Bolsheviks and the establishment of a new state, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. And in this new state, the Soviet government would allow no political opposition to the Bolshevik Party, later known as the Communist Party. In this early Soviet state, the government featured two main bodies, the Council of the People's Commissars and the Secretariat, and both of them will be completely staffed by Bolsheviks. The party itself is controlled by what is known as the Politburo, and these were the leaders of the Soviet Communist Party that would direct the government. Membership of the party was required for holding any government post from the highest all the way down to local levels. Decisions in the Soviet state followed what was known as democratic centralism. Votes within the Politburo required obedience of the party all the way down. So even if you lost a vote, you would have to accept that outcome of the vote and offer no opposition going forward. Only the leadership of the party was capable of such votes, and ultimately, that leadership would follow Joseph Stalin, or pardon me, Vladimir Lenin, and later Joseph Stalin. Lenin's Soviet Union was a one-party state. All other parties would be outlawed. It was a bureaucratic state. Lenin controlled all of the government levels within the Soviet Union, and they were all obedient to that central party. It was also a police state. The earliest secret police in the Soviet Union was known as the Cheka. Later, this would go under other names, the OGPU, the NKVD, the KGB that you're more familiar with. Um, and they would oppose any resistance to the government from within, uh, known as counter-revolutionaries. And they worked to impose that government control over all of the people of the Soviet Union. Lenin's Soviet Union banned factionalism. There was no criticism of the leadership of the party, no free speech in the state. It called for the destruction of trade unions, of independent trade unions, it called for purges and show trials of any political opposition. There was a prohibition of public worship. Uh, churches throughout the, uh, the Russian state were uh, destroyed or taken over by the government and repurposed for government purposes rather than religious purposes. There would be nationalization of private companies and the banks in Russia. Economic control of the state was, was offered through what was known as war communism and later the new economic policy. And we'll talk about more about that in a moment. It was a cultural revolution. The state would dictate uh, pra cultural practices within the Soviet Union. And it would support early on a worldwide proletariat revolution and the development of what was called common turn, the communist international, to support communist revolutions in other states. Now, Stalin's rise will follow the relatively fast demise of Vladimir Lenin. Lenin dies in January of 1924, following a long illness and multiple strokes, and he leaves no clear instructions for who will succeed him. Joseph Stalin, already by 1924, was a key figure in the government and the Communist Party. Early on in the revolution, Stalin was the People's Commissar for Nationalities, being a Georgian himself, 
a, a Georgian in Europe, not a Georgian in the United States. His connection to party leadership um, gave him control over many of the minority groups within the Soviet Socialist Republics. So he had a lot of support beyond Russia. A liaison officer in 1919 allowed him to monitor high-level personnel and policy within the Communist Party. Also in 1919, he was appointed head of the Workers and Peasants Inspectorate. This gave him oversight over all government departments. And finally, as the general secretary of the Communist Party, he had a central role in party operations and allowed him oversight of all upper level party members. These positions gave him also the power of patronage. Patronage is giving political jobs, government jobs to your supporters. And so Stalin could fill the ranks with pro-Stalin supporters. He would also benefit from massive growth of the party during what's known as the Lenin enrollment from 1924 and 25, where new members of the party owed their loyalty to Stalin as the party would almost double uh, from over 300,000 members to 600,000 members. At Lenin's funeral in early 1924, Stalin would tighten his grip on future control of the party by delivering Lenin's funeral oration. And his greatest rival, Leon Trotsky, was not even present at the funeral. Trotsky would claim that Stalin gave him the wrong date to embarrass him and to discredit him within the party. Now, Vladimir Lenin, before he died and before he was really sick in 1922, uh, drafted what was called Lenin's Testament, where he offered a critique of a number of upper level party leaders, including Joseph Stalin. And he called for Stalin's removal from the party. But this never happened, and ultimately the testament was never released, never published, because he critiqued a lot of members of the party, including Leon Trotsky. So possibly had, had others known about Lenin's feelings toward Stalin, Stalin might never have arisen, uh, but that was never outed. Lenin's move from war communism to the NEP, the new economic policy, would further weaken the deeply ideological rival of Leon Trotsky. So let's talk about that. War communism during the Russian Civil War uh, was a series of repressive economic moves uh, by the Bolsheviks to centralize control of the agriculture and industry in the Russian state called for government seizure of grains, and it called for a prohibition against profits by farmers, with the ultimate goal of being the greater production of agricultural uh, produce uh, for the state. Well, this failed during the Civil War, and, and uh, Lenin was forced to adopt what was known as the new economic policy, a temporary move to relax government controls, end those grain requisitions, and, and starting to allow food surpluses to be sold at a profit. Now, this was to the consternation of Leon Trotsky and the leftists who wanted an end to that NEP and more forceful coercion of the peasantry to follow collectivization rules that had originally existed under war communism. Also, Trotsky and the leftists in, in the uh, Communist Party were supportive of what uh, was international Marxism, this idea of a permanent revolution around the world, whereas Stalin opposed that in favor of what he called socialism in one country. Leon Trotsky would ultimately be removed from his position as the Commissar for War in 1925, and then lose other positions um, as, as he's expelled from the Politburo and the Central Committee, exiled from the Soviet Union in 1927, and ultimately assassinated by the secret police and NKVD um, in 1940 in Mexico. And you can see what would become a number of, of um, you know, uh, altered images where here at a, a speech by Vladimir Lenin, an image of uh, Leon Trotsky right next door to him would be literally scrubbed out of, of any public pictures going forward. So with the defeat of, of Leon Trotsky and the defeat of the left, now Stalin can focus on any rivals from that political right who supported a more gradual revolution and a continuation of the new economic policy.
They offered support to Joseph Stalin in his rivalry with Trotsky. But now that Trotsky was out of the picture and the left was defeated, Stalin would take the opportunity to actually adopt some of those ideas of the left and more harsh and repressive calls for collectivization and nationalization in 1928. Stalin claimed that this was necessary because threats from the, to the state from both the inside and outside of the Soviet Union required a more aggressive stance towards the peasantry. And those rightists in the political party really didn't have much control, didn't have much power in the party, leaving Stalin um, in complete control with no internal opposition. And we'll come back in a couple of days to find out what Joseph Stalin is going to do with that complete centralized control of the state. We'll see you next time.